Hi, this is Danny Lewis, course creator and tutor here at Point Blank Online Music School. This video is all about the latest partner instrument collection from Ableton Live. This has been put together by Radio Slave, and this is a great collection of loops, both drum, percussion, and musical loops, as well as some custom instrument racks and also audio effects as well. If you're into that side of things, please check out the sound design course in Ableton Live. We actually build our own custom effects racks, but if you want to see something in context, the sort of stuff of professional builds this is a great library to check out now over the next 20 minutes or so you're going to see me check out the library put together a track idea in front of your eyes so this is really me discovering the library for the first time properly and using it in context so sit back relax and take a look how the library can be used to put your track idea together really quickly and easily so the first thing to do on this Radio Slave demo is to show you where the actual loops are kept. So make sure you access your library from the browser and then come down and you've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Maybe you're familiar with what's inside here, maybe you're not. But if we go to samples and then come down to sample magic and then inside here you can see the Radio Slave for Live folder. So there's a selection of stuff in here and I'm going to suggest this is where we start because you might get some musical inspiration for working with the other devices. So the top loops, let me have a listen to these. Okay, so in terms of a definition of top loops, what we're looking at here is stuff that can be put on top of a basic beat. So say for example, if you've got a kick and a clap or a snare and you wanna add some life to it. So that's the whole purpose of these kind of loops. So I'm not gonna start with these. There are definitely some really good stuff in there. I might come back to that later. I think what I'm gonna do is probably start off with something like a bass line or some kind of synth loop. So let me take a look at what we got here. Now, I'm just taking a note of the tempo here, 125. I'm gonna set my project the same tempo. And there's some good elements here, some really good building blocks. It's actually quite bassy. I like that texture. Okay, so there's some progression in terms of the musicality. Yeah, I really like that. I think I'm gonna start off with that. Let's see how that feels. So with that going, maybe one of these top loops could be good to get some atmosphere. I just wanna see where the first beat in the bar is in relation to that loop. Now it's interesting, I was actually hearing that in a different way. I was actually hearing that from this point, see what I mean? So what I'm gonna do is change the beginning of the loop here. So let's have a listen to that. And that's a great thing about this kind of library, you can be really flexible because in live you can change where that loop starts from and get it seamlessly running. So I'm gonna roll with that, see about one of these loops. Okay, that's great. So gonna roll with that. Just gonna bring the level down. So I like that as a foundation and what I'm gonna do is drop in one of the, the MIDI devices. Let's take a look. So if we come up here and uh, the location for these, if you have a look over here, we've got Sample Magic. This is contained within the drum rack. So we've got a drum kit here, Kit Creator. This is worth taking a look at. Let's bring this over. Now, if you guys are live users where you've got used to building stuff, like for example, if you're one of our students on our courses, we're often building custom instrument racks and drum racks. Here is in fact a very, very good example 
of the sort of thing you can build. And what you can see here is basically a collection of kicks, snares, toms, hi-hats, and various percussion elements. And these are basically a selectable different selection of kits. Now, the only way to explain this really is actually just to play something. So you can hear there, there's a kick drum. So that is, at the moment, just playing this back. This is kind of like a default kit, all right? Now, if I wanted to change this kick, what I'm gonna do is look over here and we've got a sample selector. So when I rotate this, see we get different kicks according to the number. So it's a nice way to just scroll through some samples and get a feel for what is available there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this. I'm gonna get that kick down. It's not very thick, that one. So what I'll do is I'll just actually set up a clip to save me having to trigger this all the time. Let's just do this here. And then we can audition as we go. It's actually not too bad, but I wanna just see what the other possibilities are. Make a note of the numbers that you like. This is a really nice concept for the rack. I quite like that. It's got a nice vibe to it. Let's think about putting some extra elements in. Have a look at okay this hat so this hat is being triggered let me select this and now we've got a sample selector okay i'm gonna go with this one so Maybe just a couple of those and bring in some other elements so it's not too repetitive. Checking out some of these other sounds here. I might record that in. So you can see there that there's a, a little snare here. Let's find that. Gonna change the sample. Quite like that. Okay, let me go back with that other one. There we go. Just gonna turn it down a bit. So it's working nicely. So we've used that kit creator just to get a little bit of a backbeat together. We've got the music loop here, which is feeling like a bit of a bass line. So just gonna call this back beat. And this one is tops loop. So that's working nicely. So let's take a look at um, some of those loops again. Let's see if we can find something that is uh, gonna give us some inspiration. So I've gone to the wrong library here, so I'm gonna drop down. Let's go to the Ableton library and back up to the samples, Sample Magic, Radio Slave. What I've got actually sounds bassy um, for sure, but maybe we could add some kind of lower element. Let's see what we got.
Now, I actually quite like that. I'm not 100% on that just yet, but I'm going to bring this over. Let's take that off. Let's keep going with some of these. Quite like that too. And that's interesting. What I like about that is that fizzy kind of distorted texture. And what I want to do is just to see how it might feel in an arrangement. You know, I'm going to take off the original loop that I've got over here. So I really like that. I think that could work well in the structure of the track. Just a little bit hot over here on the master, so I'm going to need to drop in a utility on there. Come up um, and get to the effects. There we go, utility. Just a nice little trick just to make sure we don't go over the zero point whilst we're working. So I just bring it down a couple of dBs there. Let's see how that sounds. Okay, that's good. You know, when you're composing with elements like this, what happens is, is that in your head you can start to almost hear elements that you think could be good. Now, I'm feeling some kind of top end thing would be great. So let's revisit those tops loops and uh, let's see what we got in there. See if there's something, I'm thinking about something quite rapid. So um, maybe something that's hitting on the 16th, like a tambourine or shaker kind of vibe. So I'm actually gonna drop in from the bottom here and see if that offers anything new. So I'm gonna play it and then we can hear things in context. Now that's the kind of thing, but for me, to be honest, it's not quite right. Okay, there's an element of that I really like, so I'm gonna bring that in. Let's try and find something else as well. Now, I like the energy of that hat. I'm gonna bring that in as well. Still feel we need something more. There's a lot of very usable elements here. I like that. Maybe that percussive thing would be good for a middle eight or something. Now I'm hearing this, I'm thinking maybe some percussion. It could be good. That's what's great about libraries like this. They can be really good inspiration. Okay, now that's wicked, that's really good, but I was feeling a little bit too much bottom end on that particular one, so I should really do a bit of housekeeping here, getting carried away with it, it's very easy. Um, so let's just take a look at that. Yeah, you can really hear a kick in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna EQ that out. EQ3 should be fine. 250 is good. Maybe just a little bit lower. 
try that original bass back in. Interestingly, now I'm liking that one that I had originally as well, the bass. Let me just check those out. Yeah, that's working nicely, I think. You know, you need to just check things out. Sometimes the initial ideas are actually great. And then when you bring in a new one, it's not so good. Always cross-reference stuff that you've already done. And uh, this is my bass line now, I think. But I'm still feeling I need some kind of extra melodic thing on top. So let's come back and let's take, check out those synths. Let's see what we got here. Synth loops. Now, even though that's not musical, I actually like that texture. Let's have a look. That could come in somewhere later on. That could be really good going to call that metal percussion now this here I like the sound of that but musically that feels out of key to me so what I'm going to do is shift it about Let's open this up. I'm going to put on the high Q one, which is good if you want to do some transposition. I'm wondering about a couple of notes down. Let me have a listen. Okay, now I've twisted it in terms of the transposition. I'm not so sure about the actual sound. Let's keep moving forwards. I'm really liking it's got a real trippy kind of flavor to it you could really feel that working at certain points i'm going to use the eq3 to roll off the bass though let's see how that feels so that's great so i'm just going to move forward and just show you a couple of other bits so i'm confident that i can make a tune of that now uh, i just need to structure it and arrange it but i want to show you a couple of the other elements that are included within the library. So if we come up to the instruments, uh, we've got here this uh, collection. So you can see here, let's get away from the drum rack. We've got the instrument racks. If we come to Sample Magic Radio Slave, um, there are some drum elements here presented in a different way. And so these are like kind of broken down versions of that custom kit you had before. So let me just show you what I mean. Something that could be really good here is to have some crashes on the actual uh, tune. So if I just set up a MIDI track and on here, gonna double click. So we've got a crash multi. Let's get the uh, octave correct here. Let's work out where they are. There's one. A nice selection of crashes mapped on the keyboard. So I could perform these on top. So that's the kind of vibe you got on there. There's also a crash selector. You can rotate to choose the crashes. So there's some extra drum elements there. And also we've got some audio effects. So if I show you these, if we come down to audio effects, audio effects rack, and if we've got a sample magic radio slave, 
there's a collection here so you've got like drum effects rack synth effects rack and uh, let's for example drop the drum effects rack onto the break beat here with the onto the back beat and let's just see what we got here that's solo high cut rolling off the tops low cut taking the bass away so we've got uh, a repitch delay nice trippy beat repeat flavors on there some amplification i'm actually liking the the, the energy that's coming from that I think I'm going to have a bit of that. So yeah, look, I'm peeking here on the master, just going to bring it down. The track's really coming alive. I, could, I feel very confident this is going to be something that I could use. So that's a big recommendation for me personally. It's a really nice library, very inspirational, well worth checking out. And if you're into the whole concept of building these kind of racks, you definitely want to check out the Point Blank Online sound design course for Ableton because we've got lots of examples of building custom racks in there. At Point Blank Online, you've got two methods of interaction with your tutor. Firstly, you've got the weekly online masterclass, which is in real time. And then also we've got feedback on your assignments, and that's known as DVR. So the online masterclass is a one hour session you get with your tutor every week. You can ask questions about lesson content and get instant feedback and also demonstrations on the fly from their computer desktop with our streaming technology. DVR stands for Direct Video Response and the concept is really simple. You upload your Ableton Logic or Cubase project file to your tutor, he downloads it and then pushes record on the screen capturing software and evaluates your work. So basically giving you one-to-one -one feedback. You see all of the mouse movements and any parameter changes made by your tutor. It's kind of like sitting in the studio over their shoulder watching what they're doing whilst they work. We have found the DVR process has truly revolutionized the way that we teach online and the results speak for themselves. Book your place on the course now by visiting pointblankonline.net.